Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Friday, February 19. Three St. Catherine communities will be the main focus of the Health Ministry-led National Cleanup Day activities this Saturday, February 20. The initiative, dubbed Operation Mosquito Search and Destroy, will focus on the Old Brayton, Reeds, Penn and Rivoli communities. Speaking at Wednesday's launch, Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Winston Delahaye encouraged everyone to come out and help reduce the mosquito population. This isn't an issue that only the Ministry of Health can solve. It must be each individual, each Jamaican, around their homes, identifying sites with water. A drop of water is enough for a lava to, to grow in. And so we must identify those sites, punch holes in cans, turn things over, and get all of the bulk waste out of the homes. As the country's mosquito control program intensifies, similar activities will take place in other parishes. So we expect that after Saturday the 20th, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday going on into the next week and the week after, and as long as we need to, to warn persons to be active in their communities, in their homes, destroying these breeding sites. The cleanup effort is being supported by other government ministries and agencies. Construction will begin shortly on a new fire station in Port Maria, St. Mary, at a cost of one million U.S. dollars. Local Government and Community Development Minister Noel R. Scott says it's one of three to be constructed this year as part of the World Bank-funded Disaster Vulnerability Project. Speaking at a recent road rehabilitation function, he also announced that a new market would be built in Port Maria. And we expect that we'll be able to start very soon and the estimated expenditure on that market is approximately 40 million Jamaican dollars. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips has hailed Red Stripe's decision to return the production of beer to Jamaica, saying it's a vote of confidence in the economy. The move should commence in September. It is expected to create 300 direct jobs, while about 3,000 persons should be employed through spin-off industries by 2017. It is a testament, first of all, to the first-class work habits talents of the Jamaican worker that is here at Red Stripe, that we can capture the market globally. And I think that that indicates that as a country, we are on the right track as far as the economic reform measures that are being undertaken. Dr. Phillips pointed to the reduction in interest rates, the improvement in the business environment and the removal of duties from inputs to production as measures that had a positive impact on Jamaica's productive sector. Practitioners in the island's real estate industry are to benefit from training to improve the services they offer to the public. This as a real estate training institute was launched on Tuesday and is to begin rolling out its first set of courses in March. The institute has been welcomed by Land Minister Robert Pickersgill, who has described it as a positive step in the management and regulation of the real estate industry. It goes without saying that Jamaica continues to be a trend set up in the Caribbean, as this institute is the first in the region that is exclusively dedicated to real estate education and training at the tertiary level. It will provide the necessary blueprint that will add to the level of fair play for all stakeholders involved in the business of real estate. The institute located at 1 Surbiton Road in Kingston was formed by the Real Estate Board and Commission of Strata Corporations. The country's national training agency, the High Trust NTA, is now utilizing labor market research to create more relevant job opportunities for Jamaicans. The move has been welcomed by Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites, who has emphasized that the partnership with the labor ministry is ensuring that present and forecasted labor market needs will be filled. Never before, you students, have we had an opportunity like this. It assists us to have focus in our studies and to make reasonable choices which will prevent the disappointment experienced by so many who qualify themselves without proper research and information. Minister Thwaites was speaking at Hart's inaugural Labour Market Research Day on Tuesday. It was part of several activities for Hart's annual National Career Development Awareness Week. 
And finally, the Ministry of Youth and Culture has provided culture passports to 100 wards of the state, giving them access to cultural sites, institutions and communities free of cost or at reduced rates. The passports were presented to the Child Development Agency for distribution to wards aged 14 to 18 years. Managed by the JCDC, the initiative is designed to encourage young people to experience Jamaica's culture and heritage. Principal Director of Culture and Creative Industries Policy Division in the Ministry, Dr. Janice Lindsay, says the program has been fairly successful since it was unveiled in June last year. We have committed to produce 10,000 passports by 2017-2018. Thus far we have produced just over 2,000 and those are now being uh, disseminated to various schools. So there are a number of parishes so far that already the passports are in circulation. So it is happening. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching.